All right, so for this week's Challenge Thursday question, we have our patient, Derek. And Derek is a patient with a TBI. and He's being instructed for the first time on how to perform safe and independent wheelchair to bed transfers. Which of the following forms of practice is the most effective? So we have A, mass practice, random practice, and whole training. B, mass practice, random practice, part training. C is distributed practice, block practice, and whole training. And D is distributed practice, block practice, and part training. All right. So let's go ahead, jump into the top of this really short question this time around. All right. We got Derek, patient with a TBI. It doesn't specify what level. You know, we, we classify our patients with a traumatic brain injury on the Rancho Los Amigos scale, right? It does not say anything about that. I'm not going to use this time to start assuming anything. We know that we don't need to know that information to answer this question. It's just the fact that the patient has a TBI. So this is the first area where we can start to assume things, and we don't want to do that, okay? Now, it says that Derek is being instructed for the first time on how to perform safe and independent wheelchair to bed transfers. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and and slow down here because that's really important. It does say that the patient is, uh, you know, on his first time being instructed on this. I'm trying to make sure that it's done safely and independently, and then we're also doing the wheelchair to bed transfers. All right, so that's something to keep in mind when we start to look at our answer choices. Now, this question stem here says, which of the following forms of practice is the most effective? All right, and in order for you to get this question right, you have to have an understanding of, you know, obviously a TBI and what type of difficulties that they may have. All right. You also have to have an understanding of these different types of practice and when you would use one over the other. That's going to be super important. All right. So let's start looking at our answer choices. I'll run through them again and we'll then we'll dissect it. A says mass practice, random practice and whole training. B says mass practice, random practice, part training. C is distributed practice, block practice and whole training. And then D is distributed practice, block practice and part training. So let's look at our first one, A, mass practice, random practice, and whole training. Well, the first thing with mass practice that we have to know is that when we're giving the patient mass practice, that means that they're practicing for a longer period than they're resting. Typically, their rest periods are very low, and they're like continuously working on whatever that task is that we want them to do. The key phrase here, the key thing to remember is that with mass practice, the patient has a lower amount of rest breaks. Now, if I wanted somebody to, you know, uh, uh, acquire a skill, yeah, I would have them start, you know, doing the task, you know, repetitiously, continuously with lower amount of rest breaks. But here's the deal. Our patient has a TBI, which we know that, you know, depending on the level that they're at or the classification, that they have a high risk for confusion, agitation, you know, just overall just having difficulty retaining the information that we're trying to give them. So do I really want to do mass practice with this patient population? Mm, I mean, maybe if they were farther along at a higher level, of Rancho Los Amigos, but typically not really. All right. Now here's the other piece. It says that it's the first time we're teaching the patient this specific task. So do I want to do mass practice like right now for someone who has a TBI on the first time? Eh, Probably not. I want to keep it, you know, spaced out where I'm giving them the rest breaks, the time to actually recover and then go back into the task. I don't want to like really fatigue them out where I start pushing them towards, uh, what do we really call that? Not just fatiguing out, but getting to the point where they're starting to make errors because they're fatigued. I don't want that to happen, at least not earlier on when I'm trying to teach them. So already, I don't like that part. Then it says random practice. Now, random practice is, you know, obviously those times where we're randomizing the different tasks that they're doing. Remember, I'm teaching this patient how to go from the wheelchair to the bed, right? Safely and independently. 
Well, random practice would be me teaching the patient uh, wheelchair to bed transfers and also maybe sit to stand or uh, bed to floor transfers, something different. And I'm just randomizing, you know, which one that they're going to be doing. All right. So then one time I have them do uh, the bed to the floor and then then I have them do the sit to stand transfers and then I have them do the wheelchair to bed and then I flip it up, randomizing it. All right, that would be randomized practice or random practice. Now, here's the deal. Do I want to really do that right now? I mean, I know that can help the patient acquire the skill and retain it, but here's the deal. Since it's their first time learning how to do independent wheelchair to bed transfers, do I want to start doing a lot of randomization of the practice? Probably not earlier on. It just doesn't make sense. So that's something else I don't like. And then it says whole training. And it's like, well, there's a lot of different pieces to wheelchair to bed transfers. You know, we have to lock the wheelchair, swing the, the foot rest out of the way, maybe take the arm rest off. I mean, there's a bunch of different pieces. So do I really want to do whole training when it's the first time the patient's learning how to do this? Probably not. So I really don't like A. Again, A says mass practice, random practice, and whole training. I actually don't like any of those, really. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate A for now. Let's look at B. B says mass practice, random practice, and part training. Ah, again with that mass practice. I don't like it. We already said why we don't like massed practice. We also said why we don't like random practice, right? I don't want them like you know, randomizing all the different tasks that they're doing right now. We want to focus on wheelchair to bed transfers and doing that repetitiously. All right. So I don't like random practice, but the part training though, I do like it. Maybe we focus on, you know, locking the wheelchair, making sure the patient understands how to do that correctly and effectively and efficiently. Then we work on the foot rest. Then we work on the lifting the, the arm rest and taking that off. Then we work on the overall transfer part training. I like that. I like B from that perspective. But the mass practice and random practice, I don't. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate B for now. I don't like the mass practice. Let's look at C. C says distributed practice, block practice, and whole training. All right, so distributed practice is where our practice time and our rest time are either equal or I have more rest time. All right? And so I like distributed practice because it's given the patient the opportunity to rest more. That way I don't fatigue them out and then they start making all these errors and stuff. All right. So I like distributed practice. Um, block practice, I like that because that means that we're going to repetitiously be focused on the independent wheelchair to bed transfers. We're doing that right now repetitiously. And then later on, we can work on some other type of task. But right now we're focused on wheelchair to bed transfers. That makes sense. I like it. And then the whole training. I told you all already why I don't like whole training, right? Because trying to do the whole thing at one time where it's just like a smooth transition, locking up the wheelchair, swinging the footrest off, lifting the armrest, and teaching the patient all at once all those things, it's just too much for the first time. Let's separate it out. So I don't like C because they're doing whole training there. Does that make sense, y'all? Are we all on the same page? So I would go ahead and eliminate C, but I need to make sure that D, D as in dog, is going to be our right answer. Let's take a look at it. It says distributed practice, block practice, and part training. All right. So when I look at that, do I like distributed practice, y'all? Come on. Talk to me here. I do like distributed practice. I love that. I love the fact that it's block practice because that means that we're focusing on that one task, doing it repetitiously. And then part training. I love it because then we're separating out the different parts of the task. This is a great set of practices that I can do for someone who it's their first time learning how to do this. Making sure that they're, they're having adequate rest. Making sure that we're focusing specifically on the task that we want them to do. And then separating it out into different parts so that they can understand how all the parts are related to each other. All right? They can learn each part of the task. Our final answer here is D. It's the best. 
All right. Now, one of the questions I can often get asked about this one is, you know, related to mass practice and distributed practice. Like, can you give me another example for, you know, why mass practice wouldn't necessarily be the best for a patient, especially one with a TBI? Think about it this way. That mass practice is kind of like me sending you out. Let's say we're going to play baseball, right? And I want to teach you how to play baseball. And I want you to be a great uh, 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 baseball player where you can hit the ball. and, And every time I throw it, you hit it, right? Okay, great. Here's the deal. I have you in the batting cage. And I'm saying, you know what? I want you to just continue to swing the bat. I'm going to keep having the machine throw you the balls. And every every time, I want you to swing and swing and swing. And we're just going to continuously do that. And I'm going to give you a little bit of rest, not much rest. All right, we're going to be more swinging the majority of the time. All right, now here's the deal. If I had you do that, let's say for 20 minutes, just straight swinging the bat, you tell me what's going to happen to you. Don't you feel like you're going to start to get fatigued eventually, right? Don't you think that you're going to start creating some errors, maybe swinging a little bit later, swinging too early, maybe swinging not at the right level. You're going to start making errors. And that means that we're going to start setting you up with some bad habits, maybe some bad technique just because you are fatigued out and you're tired. And so when a patient's learning a task for the very first time, we want to make sure that we're not causing them to develop bad habits or bad techniques because they're fatigued. Does that make sense to y'all? I mean, that's a really important concept to think about when it's coming down to distributed practice and mass practice and when to use either or. All right. Again, final answer is D here. If you got this question correct, congratulations.